Welcome to 76 Grand School Chick. Let's talk about what happened in Washington, D.C.'s Reagan National Airport with the midair with the CRJ and the military helicopter. Here we have the Aviation Safety Network report. This is for Wednesday, 29th of January, 2025. And here is the narrative. PSA Airlines Flight 5342, CRJ 701, registration number November 709er Papa Sierra, and a U.S. Army Sikorsky UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter, call sign PAT 25, collided in midair and crashed into the Potomac River near Washington Ronald Reagan National. National Airport in Washington, D.C. Uh, DCA is the airport identifier. There were 64 people on board the airplane and three soldiers in the Army helicopter, according to American Airlines and a U.S. defense official. The CRJ was on a nighttime final approach to runway 33 at DCA at the time. Let's have a look at the footage. Let's have a look at that again. Here you can see the airplane that's landing. Here you can see another airplane that's taking off and just keep your eye on it. Here you can see this is the helicopter approaching the landing aircraft. And there you go. Here we have the flight aware data for this flight. You can see that it left Wichita's ICT, India Charlie Tango Airport, and came over here to land at DCA. How do I get this thing to move? There we go. Uh, the ADSB data showed the CRJ executing its sidestep maneuver while the helicopter crossed into its path. Flight aware logs confirmed the CRJ was flying a stable approach and was where it was supposed to be. The helicopter was on a training flight with three crew members on board. No VIPs were being transported at the time of the accident. We're going to listen to this shortly, but ATC advised the helicopter of the traffic and asked the helicopter to keep visual contact. They said they had the aircraft in sight, but despite this, the helicopter did not see and avoid the CRJ. S25, CRJ in flight. S25, S1 is CRJ. S25 has an aircraft in sight, press with separation. So we just heard the controller advising the helicopter of the CRJ, then telling him to pass behind the CRJ, and then he acknowledges that he has him in sight. I think they are confusing the landing aircraft for the aircraft that was taking off on the other side of the screen. And then you can hear some a controller in the background saying, oh my god, at the moment of the impact. In another phase of flight, at least the crew of the PSA jet would have most definitely gotten a TCAS alert letting them know of the nearby traffic. However, as we used to talk about in the airline that I worked at, TCAS alerts are inhibited sometimes. And in this case, all TCAS voice enunciations are inhibited below 1,000 feet radio altimeter, and all RAs are inhibited be below 1,000 feet of radio al altitude. So they just were not going to get a TCAS warning at that altitude. Uh, the reason for that is because it issues one aircraft a climb enunciation and the other one a descend enunciation. And when you're at 350 feet, there is going to be no way to descend safely to avoid the other aircraft. DCA's airspace is extremely congested and joint base bowling, which is where the military helicopter was operating out of nearby. Military helicopters regularly fly across the Potomac River near the final approach paths. Other than that, we just know that there were 64 occupants and that there are no survivors expected. And now we have to wait for the findings of the investigation. And we have a few questions like, 
Was the helicopter's transponder operational? Were the aircraft on different radio frequencies, being that one was military and the jet was communicating with the tower at Ronald Reagan? Did the background lighting affect the helicopter crew's visibility? And was there confusion with the other aircraft taking off? It is important to note that this is the first major airline aviation accident since 2009, and investigators will focus on communications breakdowns, pilot situational awareness and potential procedural failures. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.